So we're going to show a day in the life of a field sales rep on High Jump Omnitech Sales. So I'm going to start off here by clicking Begin Day. I'm in my Omnitech screen here. I click on this, click on today's date to set my default sales date, default delivery date. Today I'm using default delivery route 1012, and my name is Zachary Richards. If I wanted to have password protection or password authentication, I can have that turned on. I don't have that here. So I'm going to hit, hit OK, and it's going to come and ask me for my, prompt me for my odometer reading right odometer. Notice my screen over on the right hand side has changed. I now have new options on there where I can add my inventory to start off my day. Uh, I can also look over on the left hand side of the screen to see my Evil Bunny Brewing information that is my fictional brewery where I'm using this as a, a venue to distribute information to those outside of the four walls mobile users. Now maybe I'm giving them information on promotions or product catalogs or maybe it's just the company barbecue this Friday. So I'm going to start off, I need to put inventory on my truck, so I'm going to receive my load, and it's going to prompt me with a few different options in here. I'm going to choose my last one and click receive. It pops up and says, yes, I want to receive these. It gives me a quick validation of what I've got on here. All of these reports on here, this electronic documents can be customized to what you want. This particular layout, I can email this, print it, or I can just continue and move forward. I've now got inventory on my truck. I could say, well, you know, I'm, I'm probably ready to go, so I'm just going to hit finish my begin day. Oops, tells me I haven't completed all my begin day surveys, so I better go do that. I hook over here to survey, and I can see I've got a truck inspection to start off with. So I click on my truck inspection. It's about asking me to validate, are my brakes working? Yes. Do I have fuel? Yes. Are my lights working? Do my wipers work? Did I add the dolly to the truck? I'll say yes. We're going to go hit next. My name is Zachary today. A little scribble on there to go ahead and hit post. I've now completed my survey. I've validated my truck. I can go out here. Now I will finish my begin day. It's going to confirm, yes, I've just added these products to my truck. Here's my total cases on the truck. And I'm going to continue with this. Now my screen is going to change yet again. So I can go in here. I'm going to click service account to start off with, see what I'm going to do today. And I have a full list of all of these customers over here on the left hand side. So I may want to low and look and say, where is the closest bar that I'm going to go to and type bar. Or maybe I know a customer number. Let's type in a couple of numbers on here. Smartphone logic is just giving you a filter down to what you want. And that will work, but not really the best way that I would suggest doing this. What I would suggest is we go into all accounts, choose today is a Friday. We're going to go ahead and see, oh, here are my customers that I need to see sorted in my stop sequence list. So if I'm going to go to Pita Pit first, I'm going to go ahead and click on Pita Pit. It gives me a warning saying, hey, my account's over the credit limit. Just a warning at this point, so I'm going to hit OK. And I can see it draw, took me directly in here to say, oh, I've got mandatory messages I have to look at. So our messages in this environment here, I've got a nice screen capture. Maybe that's a planogram or a shelf set that I'm looking to do. I've got a web, a, a web link to possibly a video or instructional information, as well as a, a simple reminder, say, pick up a check. Notice I have three messages, so I've actually got a couple on here, additional messages that I have to validate before I go through and do anything else. So now that I've gone into that customer, I default over to the notes, and this is really our tribal knowledge section up at the top where you're collecting that information that maintains that service level for your customer. So some information on here, talk to Brian before leaving, park on the west side a lot. This is field collected information. The bottom half of the screen is account notes, things like Always put the best sellers in the aisle cap. Uh, make sure you're rotating to FIFO. And this guy's asked it for some Thanksgiving specials already. So additional information that is pushed out based off of maybe customer service or uh, sales planning. Now before I go in and actually get to this customer and do this, let's pretend I'm a, I'm a new guy and I don't know what I'm necessarily going to do and where I'm going to go. So maybe I want to go over and click on map and we'll launch the default map for this. I'm, I'm using this on a Windows app, Windows device. So this is coming up with Google Maps. Gives me the pin of where I'm going to go. Now, if that's sufficient, great. If that's not sufficient, I can click up here and click on my directions and get turn by turn directions, which will launch whatever that default app is. So you could set that on your device to say, go to something like a Waze and get traffic pattern, a better traffic pattern validation. Or you can leave that Google Maps, Apple Maps, whatever type of device you're using. I'm gonna bounce out of here and kind of continue with that story of what if I'm the new guy? So in that case, maybe I need to look at my item catalog. 
and see what should I be selling today? And I can go in here and look at my different products and I can kind of scroll through a couple of different options on here and I can see the different options and it gives me a little sales pitch on the top and some item information on the bottom. Uh, I can search for those. This could be a comprehensive portfolio view or this could be perhaps what you're focusing on this week or this month. Uh, but again, a nice little reminder for those that are not necessarily familiar with what they wanted to do and still learning. <clears throat> if I, you know, I saw I needed to collect a check on my message, so I might go directly into the payment screen and do that before I go in and do anything with this sale. So maybe I'm going to go in here, click on payment, and I could do a new unapplied payment. Clicking on here, and I can see I can do cash, check, or credit card. Or maybe I actually have a specific list that they're going to pay. They've come out and said, hey, here's this check for those three invoices. So you can go into your allocation screen. I'm just going to scroll down randomly, choose a couple invoices on here, and say, oh, well, this these three invoices add to $314.85. <clears throat> That's what I'd want to collect from that, that customer at that point in time. So it doesn't have to be this way. It gives you the flexibility if you want it. Great. If you don't, that's okay too. I'm going to bounce out of here and say, you know what? All these things are wonderful, but let's, let's sell some product. I'm going to go in and, and sell off of my truck today. So I'll go in. I'm going to go into the invoice screen. I'm going to generate an invoice off the truck. And it comes up and pops up my route book to start off with. And I've got these are the items that I've I'm set up on here with a build to. Some people call it par level or shelf inventory. This, these are the products that I'm traditionally selling to this customer and I'm going to go through and validate those maybe I'm going to take a shelf inventory first I might want to do that first here click on inventory and count what's there I've got a couple of inebriated night let's count two or three of those I've got one none shall pass I've got maybe four or five of my unladen and as I go along you see my bill two is validating against what I counted and my saleable quantity is the difference so it does that logic for you so let's grab a couple more Let's adjust here. And we got about a $2,600 order looks like here. I've really just done this based off of only the planogram and what I would consider to be sales magic. I've taken this value. I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to sell this. These are my route book items, stuff that I traditionally sell into this customer all the time. And I'm just doing the quick sale going through and doing this. If that's all I needed to do, I could go and hit finalize invoice right now. But let's say you need to do a little bit more. We can start off by going <clears throat> and saying, maybe I need to process some returns. So I'll click on returns here, choose my reason code from damage, buyback, stale, extra. And let's, let's see these are expired on here. And let's add a couple of these from our route book on here. And maybe we've also got some damaged. Let's add one of those guys. Now maybe I'm also giving some free product, not buy, get promotion free product, just an absolute donation. I can go over here to the samples and I could choose my reason code. And let's say I'm sponsoring a little kids baseball tournament. So I'm going to give them some, uh, some, some beverages here for the parents. So I can go here and I provide these goods, no charge through that sample screen. And this is another way of, of showing that information. Now we saw that product catalog earlier. That last tab over on the right is actually where I can show this again <coughs> and show that the, the product can go through and I can adjust the quantities and see the image and the sales pitch, the little sales screw on there to go through and as I adjust and I could go down and maybe I want to increase this quantity a little bit, bump that up a little bit. Uh, maybe there's some other things. So ultimately a couple of different ways, a couple of different things we've done, but really still what I would consider to be sales magic. I've just decided these are the things there. Maybe I need some more information. And if I do need that information, I could go down here and hit show and I can see here's my, again, a thumbnail size picture of this is the product. This is the pitch about that product. Over here, I see my history of last visits. So I can see I was there August 10th, August 4th, August 3rd. And again, I was just selling off the truck. So I delivered six, 16, 10, and 10. That's great. That gives me additional information, but maybe, a, maybe that's not what I needed. Maybe I needed to see that monthly image. So I could change this by just like clicking here and rolling up my history to monthly. And maybe, well, I know what my product looks like. I know my sales pitch on why the, the Weizenbach is great. Maybe it's more important for me to see pricing information. Or maybe I need to know what inventory is on the truck. Can I actually deliver this product? Well, let's, let's have a look at the inventory. Or perhaps even more important is, what do I have back in the warehouse? So instead of truck inventory, I want to see the host inventory. So what's actually back in the warehouse? All different options that are there. I can also see, perhaps I want to have a look and see what additional promotions are available, the different templates that are out there. All these things help me drive information into that sales rep's hands. So I'm not relying on the sales magic scenario. 
So through all these things, I've looked at this and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm good, I don't need this. So I'm gonna close this down, I'm gonna sell my usual items. I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna enter my PO number. <coughs> I'm gonna hit save and hit my finalize my invoice. And oops, well I've got something. I need to record what a lot code is for this particular item. So if I'm doing information like this, I've got these two cases, I need to know when this is expiring. So part of the FEMSA requirements, I might have to choose a lot code on here. So let's choose an expiration date. Let's set this guy let's say, okay, we're continuing. Well, I've got another warning. I also have items that are eligible for promotion. Do I wanna look, look at these? Well, let's make sure I don't miss out on opportunities. Let's say yes. I'm gonna go back over to that screen and now notice I have these little green dollar signs on these items. So I could go in here and I can look at this and say, what is my promotion alert? And it tells me, hey, if I order 48 more of item 104, I'm gonna get 10% off. Well, that's a pretty good deal. Maybe I wanna do that. Maybe I don't, but that ultimately we're proactively giving them that information to make sure that they're not relying on just some memory of maybe I had a sales meeting a week ago and they told me this item was on promotion this month. Maybe I don't remember that. We want to get rid of that reliance on human memory because frankly, your SKU portfolio gets bigger and bigger and bigger every month and we just can't manage that as humans anymore. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore this one. I'm just going to hit finalize my invoice. And I'm going to say, yeah, okay, I know, I looked. And I'll go in here and now notice, all right, I'm in the pricing screen. And if I am allowed to manipulate those pricing, I can go in here and see, here's my promo price. I actually applied a promotion on this. So this one qualified for it. <clears throat> I also have these little green and red arrows. So if I wanted to go through and I was given permission to have that flexibility on, this, on the pricing, I can go and increase or decrease the price. So let's try one of these guys and click on this and say, oh, well, look at this. My price range, a ridiculously large one at that, but my price range, I can go as low as 38.30 or as high as 67.03. So we make sure we're protecting your margin as well as protecting a possible price gouge out in the field. Uh, so you can really give that, in a, in a production world, I'm sure that range is much smaller, but you can give that range of these are acceptable prices for you. When I'm happy with that, say, yes, I've got this $2,300 order or invoice. Yes, I'm good. I can do the exact same thing on the returns tab. I can see the same on samples as well, although on samples, it's free. So my extended value is zero. I go ahead and hit continue, warns me, oops, hey, this is gonna go over the credit limit. Do I want to continue? I've set it up so I can do that. So yes, I'm gonna say, yeah, let's let's go ahead. And this customer at Pita Pit here is telling me that I actually have an invoice. I prefer to have credit memos and debit memos split for this customer. <clears throat> so based off of their requirement, I can go ahead and hit post invoice. Ask me, do I wanna do a DEX? Well, let's say, no, we're not gonna do a DEX with Pita Pit. They're not a DEX today. And let's get a scribbly signature. I've got my little box to authenticate whatever that scribble was. If I could spell. I've completed my invoice. I go ahead, hit continue. <coughs> now, if I'm collecting money additional to that, I can go ahead and say, yeah, remember we had a credit limit issue, so. Maybe I'm gonna be taking a, a check for this. So let's say check, one, two, three, four. And we're just collecting this payment here. So two, four, seven, three. Okay, and we're gonna hit post. And it says, hey, I should do this. Do I wanna continue anyways? Yeah, I'm, I'm still okay. I'm allowed to do this today. So I've got that, we're good. We're gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna post my credit on account. Let that credit flow through. I've completed the service on that one. Now, maybe I want to do something additional to that, and maybe it's important for me to go ahead and maybe I need to do a store stamp collection, or maybe I need to do additional customer service validation. So I can go over and I can look at the surveys, and I can see additional options if I wanted to, and if I needed to collect that at that point in time, I'd be able to. And let's go ahead and say, yeah, we're going to do this, so I'm going to go in and do a store stamp, and I'll go through, and I'll go in here, and I'll hit my store stamp survey. And it's gonna ask me to take a picture of this, this stamp. And I'm gonna put up a car rental survey here. We're gonna go and put this on there, take my picture, say yes. I've just validated that store stamp, uh, my fictional store stamp. Go ahead and hit post on this guy and say, yes, I've done that. All right, we're good, let's finish our stop. 
and move on to our next customer. So I could go to another customer, I could do additional things, I could see a different flow. For example, if I went to Pizza Delight, maybe I'm not doing shelf inventory or build twos. I could go in here and I'm just gonna do a real quick look at this one, say, yeah, okay, here it is, I'm gonna do the same invoice, but this time, instead of having it, all that information in there, this one is just selling off the truck. I don't have bill twos, I don't have route books, history. I'm selling anything from my portfolio. So I've got my full list on here. <clears throat> I could add my different items, create my sale. Maybe I wanna see those items, maybe I want them grouped instead of, instead of just the list. I can go by group and subgroup, narrow this down, see the different products on there. Or I could say, you know what, we're good the way it is. Let's finalize my invoice. Let's go through. I don't have a credit memo, debit memo. I'm gonna say, yes, I wanna post it. Let's do another scribbly on there. This time I didn't have the signature box to validate what that name was. Go ahead, finish my invoice. Let's collect the payment if I'm going to. Now oh, let's leave this on account. Oh, wait, there we go. This guy needs it. So let's go ahead and collect our cash. So 143.64, I'm gonna hit post gives me a payment receipt. I say, yes, I'm happy with that. I can finish my stop and I come out, I've got another check mark on here. I've serviced Pita Pit, I've serviced Pizza Delight. I can finish and proceed with everything else that I wanted to do by going back out, doing a different things. Maybe I wanna validate what I've looked at so I could go into a Dynamics dashboard, which we call our route review, that really looks at what we've done. So I could say, here are my invoices. I could look at today's rate date by default. I could do a date range. I can drill down by, maybe I only wanna see posted versus in review, or perhaps I only wanna see sales versus returns. Maybe I only wanna look at this by item instead of by customer. Different options available to you. All those different options help you manage your day. So this gives you an idea of the day in the life of what we would do out in the field. If I wanted to go over here, I hit day end. I'm going to say, hey, I haven't completed all these. Am I going to continue? Well, yeah, I am. And it's going to ask me, do I want to start my day? Ending my odometer. Let's do something else. Say I went for a long drive today. Hit OK. Enter in my expenses. Enter in my deposit. Enter in my truck stock. And go along as I proceed. And that is how we manage our day in the life of a DSD route. Thank you.